Welcome to the module on evolution of child rights in India. Learning objectives of this module. The module aims to enable the learners to gain a detailed understanding of evolution of child rights in the world with special focus on India. It also aims to provide an overview of various services available for children under child rights. Further, it is designed to equip the learner with basic knowledge which will be adequate to work as a child rights functionary. The learner will be able to understand the manner in which child rights evolved historically. It will also give the learner a chance to learn the chronology of important developments in the context of child rights in India. History of child rights. In earlier times, children were considered as small adults and the idea of special rights to children was unheard of. It was in the 1840s that the idea of special protection to children emerged in France. Laws were enacted in France since 1841 to protect children in their workplace and to grant them the right to be educated. It was only after the First World War that the world began to recognize the need for special rights for children. On 28 February 1924, the International Save the Children Union ratified the Declaration of the Rights of the Child during the Fifth General Assembly. This document was sent to the League of Nations, which adopted the Geneva Declaration on 26 September 1924, proclaiming that humanity has to do its best for the child. The League of Nations later became the United Nations. The document in five chapters discussed the well-being of children and recognized their right to development assistance, relief and protection from adults. The Geneva Declaration is a historic document that recognized and affirmed for the first time the, the existence of rights specific to children and the responsibility of adults towards children. The first international human rights document in history to specifically address children's rights is the Geneva Declaration, which is based on the work of Polish physician Janusz Korczak. The United Nations continued its efforts for bringing child's rights onto center stage. Establishment of UNICEF. World War II caused untold sufferings to thousands of children. On 11th December 1946, the United Nations General Assembly proclaims a new ethic of protection and care of children, establishing the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, UNICEF, to respond to the millions of displaced and refugee children deprived of shelter, fuel and food in the aftermath of World War II. In October 1953, the General Assembly decided to continue UNICEF's mandate on a permanent basis a permanent international organization, reaffirming the broader terms of reference established for the fund in 1950. The words international and emergency are dropped from the official name, which now becomes the United Nations Children Fund, but the original acronym UNICEF is by now too well known to be changed. During the 1970s, UNICEF grew into a vocal advocate of children's rights. During the 1980s, UNICEF assisted the UN Commission on Human Rights in the drafting of the Convention of the Rights of the Child. UNICEF has been working in India since 1949 and the largest UN organization in the country. The overall goal of the 2013-2017 country program is to advance the rights of children, adolescents and women to survival, growth, development participation and protection by reducing inequities based on caste, ethnicity, gender, poverty, religion or region. It has been formulated within the context of the 12th five-year plan and the United Nations Development Action Framework. It aims to accelerate progress towards the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals. Building on over 60 years of collaboration, UNICEF will continue to be an active partner of the government in striving to achieve children's rights in India. United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, UNCRC. In 1959, the United Nations General Assembly 
adopted the Declaration of the Rights of the Child. The DRC describes children's rights in 10 principles. However, this document was not signed by all the countries. Therefore, these 10 principles only provided an indicative value. The DRC paved the way for the Universal Declaration of Children's Rights, which is popularly known as the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. The UNCRC was unanimously adopted by the UN General Assembly on 20th November 1989. This became the first internationally binding instrument which recognized all the fundamental rights of the child. The UNCRC gave legal expression to the notion that children have independent human rights and that those rights would be at the heart of all political, economic and social decision making. Its 54 articles describe the economic, social and cultural rights of children. It enshrines the general principles of non-discrimination, best interests of the child, right to life, survival and development and respect for the views of the child. It then elaborates the specific civil rights and freedoms, family environment and alternative care, basic health and welfare, education, leisure and cultural activities and special protection measures. India ratified the UNCRC in December 1992. Therefore, the government of India is obligated to implement the rights contained in the UNCRC. As of 2011, the International Charter of Child Rights has been signed by 191 countries out of 193, thus giving it wide acceptance and recognition. Important Landmarks in the Evolution of Child Rights in India Laws were enacted in France since 1841 to protect children in their workplace and to grant them the right to be educated. The first piece of law in India which made a modest attempt to cater to the specific needs of children within the criminal justice apparatus was the Apprentice Act of 1850. The Reformatory's School Act 1897 separated for the first time in India children from adults in the criminal justice system. Following the recommendation of the Indian Jails Committee 1919-1920, the Madras Children's Act 1920 was introduced. The International Save the Children Union ratified the Declaration of the Rights of the Child during the 5th General Assembly on 28th February 1924. The League of Nations, which adopted the Geneva Declaration on 26th September 1924, proclaiming that humanity has to do its best for the child, the League of Nations later became the United Nations. The Child Marriage Restraint Act 1929, it was amended in 1978. UNICEF began its work in India in 1949. The United Nations created a special fund called the UN Fund for Urgency for the Children. This later became the UNICEF. UNICEF was granted the status of a permanent international organization, 1953. The United Nations General Assembly adopted the Declaration of the Rights of the Child, 1959. The Government of India enacted the Children's Act, 1960, which was applicable in Union territories. India formulated its first national policy for children in 1974. The year 1979 is declared as International Year of the Child by the UN. The Juvenile Justice Act enacted in 1986 was the first juvenile justice law in India, which was uniformly ap applicable across the country. The Child Labour Provision and Regulation Act 1986. The United Nations Convention on Child Rights was unanimously adopted by the UN General Assembly on 28th November 1989. At the World Summit for Children in 1990, India adopted the World Declaration for Survival, Protection and Development of Children. India ratified the UNCRC on 11th December 1992. National Human Rights Commission which is an autonomous statutory body, was established on 12th October 1993 under the provision of the Protection of Human Rights Act 
1993. The Government of India enacted the Preconception and Prenatal Diagnostic Technique Prohibition of Sex Selection Act 1994. The Child Rights Information Network is launched by UNICEF linking UN agencies, academic institutions and NGOs to gather information on child rights activities globally 1995. The Government of India submitted its first country report on the Convention of the Rights of the Child in February 1997. In order to comply with the provisions of the UNCRC, the Juvenile Justice Act 1986 was amended and re-enacted as the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2000. The Government of India appointed an expert committee under the chairmanship of Justice B. R. Krishna Iyer for drafting the National Commission for Children Bill 2000. The Supreme Court of India banned corporal punishment for children on December the 1st, 2000. In May 2000, the optional protocol to the International Charter of the Child Rights regarding the participation of children in armed conflict is ratified. It entered into force in 2002. This text prohibits minors taking part in armed conflicts. The National Charter for Children 2003 was adopted and notified in the Gazette of India on 9th February 2004. In early 2006, the Department of Women and Child Development became a full-fledged ministry and child protection matters were transferred to this new ministry. The JJ Act was further amended in 2006 as the Juvenile Justice, Care and Protection of Children Amendment Act 2006 and in 2011. The government enacted the Commission for Protection of Child Rights Act 2005, which was notified in the Gazette of India on 20th January 2006. National Commission for Protection of Child Rights was constituted on 31st July 2006. To overcome the shortcomings of Child Marriage Restraint Act, the Government of India enacted the Prohibition of Child Marriages Act 2006, which came into effect from 1st November 2007. The Integrated Child Protection Scheme ICPS, was launched by the Ministry of Women and Child Development, Government of India on 26th February 2009. The Rights of Children to Free and Compulsory Education Act 2009 came into force with effect from 1st April 2010. Guidelines governing adoption of children in India were formulated in 2011. The Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act 2012. The Union Cabinet of India on 18th April 2013 approved the National Policy for Children 2012. The Union Government introduced proposals for the amendment of the Juvenile Justice Act 2014. Issues and Child Rights Although India today has been on the trajectory of economic growth and there have been several initiatives by the government for eradication of poverty, a significant portion of the population continues to live in poverty. Economic inequalities are rampant and children are most affected. Eight important rights in the context of children are the following. Right to life, right to health, right to safe water, right to food, right to education, right to protection, right to freedom, right to identity. Right to life. According to vital statistics data for 2012, the infant mortality rate IMR varies from 10 to 56 in different states in India. In rural India, IMR has been declined by 30% while the decline is 28% in urban India since 2003. The IMR is a count of deaths of infants under one year of age per 1000 live births in a year. It is considered a key indicator of health services, nutritional levels, poverty and educational level of the people. Reduction in IMR is one of the Millennium Development Goals set by the United Nations with a deadline of 2015. The decline in IMR is one positive development in the context of right to life. Poverty coupled with cultural preference for male children has been mainly responsible for the deaths of thousands of children in India every year. The practice of female feticide 
selective abortion, female infanticide, drowning, poisoning, suffocation or deliberate negligence leading to the death of the child and general neglect of girl children in India continue to result in large scale deaths of girls which have even adversely affect the sex ratio. Right to health. It is a prerequisite to right to life. A large number of children die each year in India. Lack of appropriate health care, lack of immunization, prevalence of preventable diseases, unsafe drinking water, absence of sanitation, dearth of regular monitoring of pregnancy, unsafe deliveries and malnutrition are mainly responsible for most of such deaths. According to the National Family Health Survey, India accounts for one third of the world's children who suffer malnutrition. Coming to mental health, World Health Organization has indicated that 15% of children in India have serious emotional disturbances, WHO 2001. Yet another issue in the context of child health is child marriage. Child marriage is a reality in India. All children have a right to care and protection, to develop and grow into a complete individual, regardless of their social and economic situation. Child marriage is a blatant violation of all these rights. It is widely believed that as many as 50% of the Indian women are married off before the age of 18. It is observed that child marriages are more prevalent among rural and poorer sections of the population. In some parts of the country, it is the culture and tradition that are highly responsible for this practice. Lack of parental interest in educating their girl children and the eagerness of parents to send their girl children away to minimize the financial burden are other factors responsible for this problem. The practice results in early pregnancies and childbirth at a tender age. The consequences on the health of the young girls are obvious. Infant and maternal mortality rates are two of the many consequences of child marriage. Besides other reproductive health problems also surface. These are very rarely taken care of resulting in low health status of women. A UNICEF stock taking report on children and AIDS says that AIDS related deaths among adolescents between ages 10 and 19 increased by 50 percent between 2005 and 2012 rising from 71,000 to 1,10,000 and that many of them were unaware that they were infected. An estimated 74 percent of the 2.1 million adolescents lived in 12 high burden countries in 2012. India is among these high burden countries. Other countries include South Africa, Nigeria and Tanzania. The total infected adolescent population in South Asia is 1,30,000 with 51% boys and 49% girls. It says that investments to the tune of US $5.5 billion by next year will be required to avoid an added 2 million adolescents, particularly girls, becoming infected by 2020. Right to safe water. Yet another precondition to the right of life is the right to safe water. Access to clean water is a major issue in India. A large portion of India's human population is deprived of safe drinking water. In rural areas, access to potable water remains a considerable problem. 20% of the rural population do not always have access to potable water. Because of this, it is the children living in these areas who are most exposed to various health problems linked to water. As in the absence of adequate availability of water, children are not able to maintain minimum standards of hygiene. Due to insanitary conditions and the absence of potable water, waterborne diseases are widely prevalent causing despair and death. Children are the worst affected sufferers of this adversity. Right to food. It is the right to not die of hunger and to not suffer from malnutrition. Although India has been producing surplus food, a significant section of the population, including children, remains undernourished. According to Global Hunger Index report, about a quarter of the world's hungry or 210 million are in India. India continues in the alarming category of countries classified by severity of hunger. According to the National Sample Survey Organization, the nutritive value of food consumed per person 
is dipping. It declined from 2153 calories per person per day in 1993-94 to 202 calories in 2009-2010 in rural areas and from 2071 to 1946 kilo kilocalories in urban areas. While children from wealthy sections face overeating problems, children from poorer sections suffer from malnutrition. Poverty, lack of awareness about balanced diet are the main reasons for these situations. Subsidized food grains and pulses are being provided by the government to the economically weaker sections. Besides, with a special focus on supplementing children's nutrition, there are two major government initiatives in India, namely the Midday Meal Scheme and the Integrated Child Development Services Scheme. All state governments in India have introduced the Midday Meal Scheme in schools with a view to ensure children at least one full meal a day. Under the ICDS scheme, children in the 0 to 6 age group are provided with supplementary nutritional diet. According to another report, every second Indian child 6 to 35 months is malnourished. The report quoting Cry further states that 79% of Indian children are anemic. Right to education. According to the 2011 census data, 26% of the Indian population are illiterate. This accounts for the largest number of illiterate people in the world. Absence of parental literacy results in neglecting children's education. Gender-based and caste-based discrimination also are factors causing marginalization of children in the education system. Girls are consistently denied equal opportunities to attend and complete primary schooling. As a result, primary education is far from universal. The fact that many children are not enrolled in schools and many drop out before the completion of their education are matters of great concern. The Right of Children to Free and Compulsory Education Act 2009, which came into force with effect from 1st April 2010, is an important milestone towards ensuring the educational rights of children. Right to Protection According to the Ministry of Women and Child Development, Government of India, in 2007, more than 69% of children aged 5 to 18 years old are victims of abuse. A large number of children are also victims of abuse at home and in schools. According to UNICEF, estimation hundreds and thousands of girls are trafficked and used for prostitution in brothels in cities. Child protection is about protecting children from or against any perceived or real danger or risk to their life, their personhood and childhood. It is about reducing their vulnerability to any kind of harm and protecting them from harmful situations. It is about ensuring that no child falls out of the social security and safety net and those who do receive necessary care, protection and support so as to bring them back into the safety net. With a view to mitigate limitations listed above, the Ministry of Women and Child Development, Government of India introduced the Integrated Child Protection Scheme in 2009 to contribute to the creation of a system that will efficiently and effectively protect children, minimizing the gaps in services. It is based on cardinal principles of protection of child rights and best interest of the child. Its purpose is to reach out to all children, in particular to those in difficult circumstances, by combining the existing child protection schemes of the MWCD under one centrally sponsored scheme. The ICPS focuses its activities on children in need of care and protection and children in conflict and contact with the law. One important issue in the context of child protection is child labour. Hundreds and thousands of children are employed in all forms of labour in India. Large-scale trafficking of children is noticed all over the country. Large-scale physical and sexual abuse of working children has compounded the problem. They live in poverty with insufficient food and shelter, having no access to health care. Right to freedom of expression. 
This right refers to the child's right to freedom of thought and expression, to have opinions, to have access to information and to participate in decisions which affects his or her life. Children also have the right to religious freedom. The Indian constitution guarantees freedoms of expression and opinion. However, by and large, children are not allowed to express their opinions. The viewpoints of children are not given due importance. Mostly adults take all major decisions on behalf of children. Unfortunately, children's participation at any level is considered least important in India. As cultural practice, children are always told to obey elders without questioning. Children are always told not to express their opinions in front of elders. Right to identity. Foolproof registration of births is not a reality in India. Only about 41% of births, mostly in urban areas, are registered in India. In the absence of birth registration, children are deprived of their rights as they are treated as non-entities. Each child has the right to have a surname, a first name, a nationality and to know who his or her relatives are. The right to identity also means that each child's existence and rights must be officially recognized. In India, children continue to be discriminated against because of their class, caste or religion. Paradigm shifts. An initiative was taken during the fifth five-year plan to focus on child protection and the first national policy for children 1974 came up with this plan, which shifted the focus from welfare to development of the child. The NPC declared that children shall be protected against neglect, cruelty and exploitation. To achieve these aims, the state shall provide necessary legislative and administrative support. There has been a paradigm shift in approaches towards children. The shift in focus is from the welfare to the development approach. Approaches towards children. Early approach, needs, welfare, institutional and residential care, custodial care, segregation and isolation, beneficiary and recipient, present approach, rights, development, non-residential and family-based alternatives, holistic development, inclusion in the mainstream, participation and partnership. History of legislations for protecting child rights in India. The beginnings. First legislation pertaining to children in India was the Apprentice Act of 1850. This legislation, however, did not create a separate juvenile justice system, but worked within the adult justice system. It was the Reformatories School Act 1897, which separated for the first time in India, children from adults in the criminal justice system. Children's Acts. Following the recommendation of the Indian Jails Committee 1919-1920, the Madras Children's Act 1920 was introduced, which became the first Children's Act in India. It was a provincial law and covered the then Madras province. The Bengal Children's Act and the Bombay Children's Act and many other such legislations then followed. In 1960, the Government of India enacted the Children's Act which was applicable to the Union territories. All these legislations were repealed with the enactment of the Juvenile Justice Act 1986. The Juvenile Justice Act. The JJ Act is, was enacted in 1986, was the first juvenile law in India, which was uniformly applicable across the country. In order to comply with the provisions of the UNCRC, the Juvenile Justice Act 1986 was amended and re-enacted as the Juvenile Justice, Care and Protection of Children Act in 2000. It was further amended in 2006 as the Juvenile Justice, Care and Protection of Children Amendment Act 2006 and 2011. The juvenile justice system in India today is governed by this most important piece of legislation. The Union Government in June 2014 has introduced proposals to amend the Juvenile Justice Act. Provisions of Child Marriage Act. The Child Marriage Restraint Act was first enacted in British India in 1929. 
It was amended in 1978. To overcome the shortcomings of Child Marriage Restraint Act, the Government of India enacted the Prohibition of Child Marriages Act 2006, which came into effect from 1st November 2007. Under this act, a child or minor is a person up to 18 years in the case of girls and 21 years in the case of boys. The solemnization of child marriages is a cognizable and non banable offence in India. Child Labour Prohibition and Regulation Act 1986 The CLPR Act is the foremost legislation on preventing child labour. The CLPR Act is repealed the Employment of Children Act 1938. Under this act, a child means a person who has not completed the age of 14 years. The act prohibits child labour in certain specific hazardous occupations and manufacturing processes. The act is not applicable to processes carried out by families with their own members. Commissions for Protection of Child Rights The act envisages setting up statutory bodies like a national commission at the national level and the state commissions at the state level. The commissions were set up for proper enforcement of children's rights and for the effective implementation of laws and programs relating to children. Many state governments have also set up state commissions for protection of child rights. The commissions are authorized to initiate sumoto steps to ensure child protection and child rights. Right to Education Act The Right of Children to Free and Compulsory Education Act 2009 came into force with effect from 1st April 2010. The RTE Act aims to provide free and compulsory education to all children from the ages of 6 to 14 in the neighbourhood, school till completion of elementary education. Protection of Children from Sexual Abuse The Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act 2012 came into effect on 14th November 2012. This Act aims to strengthen the legal provisions for the protection of children from sexual abuse and exploitation. It provides protection to all children under the age of 18 years from, from the offences of sexual assault, sexual harassment and pornography. Agencies for Child Rights Although there is an increase in awareness about child rights, more of concerted efforts are required to ensure better child rights in India. An obstacle in realising the rights of the child is the debt burden facing third world countries like India. New technology Changing economic structures and policies need to be reviewed. Both government and voluntary agencies are working for child rights in India. There are six types of agencies working for child rights in India. Decision-making agencies under the JJ Act 2000. Agencies providing institutional care for children. Agencies providing non-institutional services for children. Child protection agencies. Child rights advocacy groups. Funding organizations. Summing up this module, the learner will understand the concept of child rights, the historical emergence of child rights, role of UNICEF in ensuring child rights, important landmarks in the evolution of child rights in India, various legislations in India for child rights protection, agencies for child rights. Thank you for attending this session.